Welcome back to the Alexis May channel. I've got a treat for you today. I get to do my besties hair today. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Okay, so we are going to be doing basically a touch up because it's been how long? I think since September, maybe August. I don't know. Too long. And how we can tell is we like pull up the money piece and her highlights literally like look at how high up they start. So we're gonna take you guys through everything that we do on her hair. Let's go. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Hop over here, follow me. We can connect, you can hang out and get daily tips. All right, we're gonna do my bestie's hair glow up. She definitely needs one. So we're gonna grab Oligo Lightener and 10 volume. Now her hair is about a level six, seven. I would say more of a seven. So she does not need a super high volume developer. Okay, you guys, 10 volume is gonna do the trick, I promise you. So we are going to start with doing highlights around her hairline. She definitely needs these brightened up because whenever she pulls her hair up, she needs it to be light. This is definitely something that you can do every single time you do someone's hair. Even if you're doing a partial highlight, you can still go in and around their hairline to give them that glow for when they put their hair up. So I'm going to be using my Fermar foils. I use the rose gold or whatever other ones they are. I love the pop-up foils. They're amazing. And then I'm going to be using this balayage board. Everything's going to be listed down in the description box for you guys. I'm taking very thin sections. I'm using a diagonal back. So higher towards the face, lower towards the middle of the nape area, just following her natural hairline. I'm going to take a baby light section and then I'm going to put that foil on that board so I can really easily be able to color this area without it moving all over on me. I'm going to apply the lightener on just the regrowth all the way up to her root area and we're going to fold this in be really mindful of those pieces that are already highlighted we don't want to get those so now you see how we're going to connect those back foils around her ear area this spot often gets missed and it drives me crazy whenever i see people in this area get mixed so we're going to be doing anywhere from two to four of these highlights around the hairline it just depends on how thick someone's hair is and what I like to do is I like to do back to back ones. So that way it's just really bright and gives you a really great pop. So one of the things, again, remember I'm doing a diagonal back section. So that way it's really beautiful all around her hairline. Then on her, I did two of the baby lights and then I do a small zigzag section. Reason why is because I just want to grab an even brighter pop area. So we're going to pick up the points off of this. So you can see I pick up the points and then we're going to do a teasy light. So we're going to tease that section up from the mid shaft up and then I'm going to do the same thing. Grab my board, grab my foil, lay that down and we are going to apply this lightener at a diagonal back section. So that way it just gives you some really bright big pops of dimensional color in here. And she basically was dark all the way down to her end. So we're just going to grab that whole piece and put it in there. So I've got three foils and that is going to finish up and look at this. Whenever you look at this, it is going to be all around the hairline for when she pulls it up. I'll show you at the end. Now I'm doing a partial on her because I want that depth and dimension in that mid area. So we're going to be doing teasy foils for the majority of the hair and the highlights that we're doing. So I'm going to lay my board down and unfortunately I'm still working on my color and all the stuff with my new camera. I'm adjusting to it and I did not see that the foil was making the camera not be able to see the entire highlight. So bummer for that, but I'm taking thicker sections. So what I'm doing is I am doing a normal diagonal back section. I'm picking up very large, thick weave sections, and then I'm teasing those. This is going to give you more intentional dimension. So do you see those pieces Then I'm going to tease it? Then when I put the lightener on, I'm still doing a diagonal back lightener to this. So that way she's going to get those really beautiful dimensions. So I'm going to do that all the way up to that section and then do horizontal ones. Now going around her face, around the hairline, it's super important to get very small, thin sections. You should be able to see through this perfectly. Again, I'm going to use the board for the majority of this because it really helps me to keep those foils locked in place and not have to worry about my foil going everywhere and getting messy. So I'm going to apply the lightener only on the regrowth. She's got a lot of it. And then I'm going to fold this up in there and lock those sides in. So that way I do not have to worry about it moving anywhere on me. So that way we're not getting bleed spots or anything like that. 
Typically for around the hairline, I do as many foils as needed to just give that bright pop of a money piece. Anywhere from three to six foils, depending again on the person's hairline. Because remember, these are finer sections. So we don't really need to do anything too crazy. So after I've done all of these foils, that's when I start to go in and I do my TZ foils, again, at a diagonal back section. So that is what I'm going to start doing through the rest of her hair. And it just, again, depends on the person's hairline. So you can see I've picked up some pieces. Remember, you want to still keep depth in there. You don't ever want to take someone too blonde if you're wanting to do a faux balayage and have those dimensional pops in there. Too much can take that away and make your client just look like a blonde. Not even keep any of that beautiful dimension because whatever makes hair look lighter is darker pieces next to it. So in and around her front hairline, I'm going to take a middle section. She's parts in the middle or she parts on the side all over. So I want it to be even on both sides. I tend to go at a diagonal back section again. This is my favorite sectioning because I know that all around the hairline is going to be colored. And this kind of goes again with the natural way the hair falls around someone's face. That is key and super important. I'm again taking very small sections that you can read through and I'm doing a baby light stitch around her face. I am taking this all the way up to the root area and coloring anything that needs to be lightened, being really mindful that this is the front of her hairline and I don't want to overlap. So I'm going to gently fold that up and then fold my sections in, being super mindful because I don't want to hit it and make the color go everywhere. So depending on how far back someone wants their money piece, I normally do around four to six foils again in this front hairline. Now you guys can see some of these are gonna look a little bit more like a baby light. Some of them are going to look more like a baby slice. So that way she gets maximum amount of pop in the front of her hairline, but also it's still going to be soft. You guys are gonna see it in that end, how soft it's going to look. And what I like to make sure is that from the middle section of the part, to the other section of the part on the bottom towards that bottom section, it's going to all reach so that way there's no black holes or spaces in between. Now I'm going to move on to teasy lights when I've got my money piece set in. Again, I'm going to do a little zigzag section and then pick the points up off that zigzag section. And you guys can see I'm doing larger pickups on my weave. I'm kind of getting it to exactly how I want. Then I'm going to tease it down. I normally pull from the mid shaft down, make sure that it's really tight in there. And then I'm going to place that foil in and underneath. And you guys can see here kind of how I do, how I apply the lightener. So I definitely keep it at a little bit of an angle, keeping it higher towards the part and a little bit lower towards the bottom section. So it has a nice little angle towards it to keep that depth in there and make it look really natural. Then I'm just going to fold that baby up and continue on back. 10 volume, you guys, she sat under the dryer and she lifts magically. You want to see what 10 volume can do? This right here, white blonde, absolutely beautiful. And I love Oligo because it leaves the hair so in such good health and I am absolutely obsessed with it. So we're going to get her rinsed and guess what guys, we don't even do a toner on her freaking hair. Look at how beautiful that is. She's perfect. Look at that before and after glow up and around the hairline. You guys can see how that looks. It looks so soft and so beautiful and look at all that dimension in there. So this is what a nice like money pop in the front can be, but then you're also going to see some nice dimension going throughout the rest of her hair. It's not completely like a melt. I want to have dimensional bright pops in there and then we're going to curl it so you can see it even better because the hair from straight to curled looks different. I wanted to show you guys both so you guys can see kind of what it's going to look like. And we're gonna do a nice little comb out on her hair. This is a really good time to get some content if you have an assistant or friend that can come and video for you. But look at her hair, you guys. By the way, this girl uses all Mani products and our hair is so healthy and looking so gorgeous. We have no issue using 10 volume on her hair. 
Look at that beautiful dimension in there and I love it. I have like the most beautiful best friend ever. Look at that gorgeous front pop and all the dimension. Are you guys obsessed as I am? And no toner, are you kidding me? Okay, if you guys love this video, don't forget to watch some of my other videos out there. Subscribe, follow me on Instagram and if you have any ideas, of what you want to see next let me know in the comments below so i can keep an eye out for what i should record for you guys okay see you in the next video